Hi, welcome to our math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on linear programming. In this video, what I want to do is I want to optimize this equation subjected to these four inequalities. The way I do that is I graph these four inequalities and I get a shaded region. I'll start by doing that and kind of explain the next steps as I get there. To graph these inequalities, because, because the numbers are kind of large, I don't want to go to slope intercept form. What I'm going to do for each of the equations is I'm going to graph the intercepts. And because right now what I'm doing is mapping out those intercepts, I don't um, need to worry about the inequality here. All I'm doing is trying to find where this line inequality crosses the x and y intercepts. So what I want to do is I want to find out where this line crosses the x intercept and that happens when y is 0. If y is 0 then 5x equals 50 or x equals 10. Where it crosses the y axis is when x is 0 or 50. I now want to do the same thing with the second line. I have 8x minus y equals 15. Where does this cross the x-axis? That is going to be at 15 eighths. Um, I can do that, or because it's a terminating decimal, 1.875. Where does this cross the y-axis? It's gonna cross the y-axis at negative 15. Okay, so if I wanna look at what this looks like, I quickly sketch out an x and y axis. Normally I focus on the first quadrant, that's what the last two equations will give me. You'll see that when we get there. But because I have a y-intercept that's negative, I'm dropping this a little bit lower. My x-intercepts are 1.875 and 10. My y-intercepts are negative 15 and 50. Notice I'm not worrying about scale at all. I'm really more worried about readability than about scale. So I, let's see, I connect these two intercepts together and I connect these two intercepts together and what I'm getting is an exaggerated version of the graph that's easy to follow. Okay, now I need to figure out, right now I have four basic sections. I need to figure out which of them is shaded. So x plus y is less than or equal to 50, so that means I'm gonna shade below this line. If you're uncertain about shading, test out a point like zero, zero. If I tested out zero, zero, um, I would test, does five times zero plus zero, is that less than or equal to 50? Because it is, that means I wanna to shade towards the origin. You don't have to test the origin. Um, if I looked at my second line, I'm going to test, instead of the origin, why don't I test uh, 1, 1. If I test 1, 1, I would test is 8 times 1 minus 1 greater than or equal to 15. Is that, is 7 greater than or equal to 15? It isn't, which means on this line, I'm going to shade away from that point. So I now have a part of the graph that's shaded according to these two lines. These last two inequalities force my answer to stay in the first quadrant. X is greater than or equal to zero means that I am in the positive X, in other words, to the right of the Y axis, and Y is greater than or equal to zero means I'm above the X axis. So the region that is shaded by all four lines is this triangle right here. So my next challenge, once I have my graph, is I want to find the corners of the graph. So I have 10, 0. I have 1.875, 0. And I need to figure out this point as well. Okay, so I need to find out where these two lines intersect. Because the y's are equal in coefficient, opposite in sign, to figure this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5x plus y equals 50 and 8x minus y equals 15. I'm going to add them together. 13x is equal to... Uh, 65, and when I divide by 13, I get 5. Then I'm going to find out what y value goes with that. So I have 5 times 5 plus y equals 50. 
25 plus y equals 50, which means y has to be 25. And then I check it out. Does this really work in the second equation? Is 8 times 5 minus 25 really equal to 15? 40, 30, 20, 15. Yes. Which means this point right here is the ordered pair. X is 5, Y is 25. Okay, so what's the point of all this? This whole shaded triangle, every point in this triangle satisfies all four of my conditions. And I can plug any one of these ordered pairs into this optimization equation to find out what which point in this region makes this P the largest. But the thing is, and I think this is really cool, is the three corners of this triangle, one of these three corners will be the largest value. So instead of having to worry about the infinite number of points in the triangle, I just have to test out my three points. Okay, so now I do my testing. If I test the point 1.8750, with this equation, what I'm gonna have is P equals 150 times 1.875 plus 450 times zero. And this is going to equal um, 281.25. Okay, now I come to my next point, this 525. If I test this point, I have 150 times 5 plus 20, 450 times 25, which is going to equal 12,000. And last but not least, I'm going to test out 10, 0. P is equal to 150 times 10 plus 450 times 0, which is going to be 1,500. So, where does this get maximized? The max is when P is equal to 12,000 at the point 525. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.